the Joe Rogan experience. I did an expedition in, right before Lex came, I did an expedition in March. And me and JJ went to the back. We basically picked a part of the Amazon that we'd never been to and went, let's go see what's over there. And it took you us just over. picked a spot. We picked a spot because it was around in a place that, like, on the map, there's, there's, no, there's no towns. There's no nothing. So we said, let's go there. And it took us a week. We had to take a commercial flight to a smaller flight to a smaller flight. And then we had to take a boat for three days, nine hours a day, to get to the start of the expedition. Now, when you do that, do you check to see if there's uncontacted tribes that are reported in those areas? We, what you do is you get to the last town. <laughs> And you go, you wait. what's that way? And they tell you. And the scariest thing, and this was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life, was that there were these tiny little people there. And they were, so there was like normal Peruvians walking around, like loggers, gold miners. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're chainsaws. There's people who had gasoline barges. There's also prostitute boats that drive around, like brothels that go On a down. boat? Yeah. And, and, you, and you can pay them in wood, surprisingly enough. Board feet of timber, no joke. Um, Whoa. Yes, yeah, so you get to the real, like, this is a place where, like, you feel like you went in a time machine. And you get out there, and there's people with modern machines, but then off in the corner, there were these little people, and they were still holding on to their bows and arrows. And you look at them, and as soon as you look at them, they hide. And we were like, who are they? And they are like, those are the Nawa. And we were like, what's going on with the Nawa? And it turns out that the Nawa were shooting at the oil company guys that were trying to get into this deep, again, a part of the forest that never has been accessed before. Now it's starting, people are reaching deeper into the Amazon. And the problem is they'd be going up this river and there'd be arrows flying by them. Oh my God. So how'd they solve that problem? They funded the missionaries, sent the missionaries out there to talk to the Nawa and convince them to come back to the nearest town. So these are uncontacted tribes who are right there. Like we're standing there, like kind of talking to them. We're like, hola. And they're, How do the missionaries communicate with them? The missionaries go like, you know, Bible up and they just hope. <laughs> and they just fucking hope. Are these the Mormons? Like what groups? I actually don't know. Mormons I, I, love to do that. I don't know what group it was. I know I saw I saw the missionary and he gave me a dirty, evil look and walked away. Like this is dark shit. Is the dark missionary shit. gave you an evil look. Oh, That's no, no, no. These are not people that are okay. And so these terrified... Think about this for a second. These, so these, what are the missionaries up to? They're working for the oil companies. They're clearing out the forest. They're clearing the way. They're just doing it peacefully. But so, are they actual missionaries or are they acting as missionaries? Whatever it is, they're, they're going with the missionary protocol, getting these people to come in. So what they did was through two translators from Spanish to, some, to, to Yine to Nawa to something, we asked this guy and we had to stay away because we didn't want to get them sick. And we had to say like, what are you doing here? And the guy was like, I'm trying to go back to my house, like where I live in my house, my jungle. And he said, these missionaries said, if I came here, that then we, they'd help me in the food and, you know, and they were very confused because the missionaries had brought back a boatload of them and kind of tricked them. Cause then when they got to the town, they just showed up to capitalist society, which even though it's super remote, they're like, you want food? You got to buy it. And these people have a bow and arrow, but there's no more animals around because oh they've killed my everything. God. And they go, but I want to go home. And the missionaries go, well, do you got gasoline? Now they're stuck. Oh, my God. And how far? Like three days of driving in a boat, so like 70 miles by river. Oh, my God. And so these poor people are coming into modern society a thousand years late with their wooden bow and arrows. They're this big. They're tiny little people. And they're terrified. And no one's helping them. Oh, my God. And it's the edge of the world. And it's exactly when I was, and I was reading this Comanche book on that expedition. And I'm going, this is the same thing. It's that manifest destiny. Mm. This is the end of their culture. There's oh. no one. There's no one who's going to help them. And they were just terrified sitting there at the edges of the streets. And all these people are riding by on like motorcycles and rickshaws. And this boat's going by. And these people <sighs> are trying to look for like a rat to shoot. Oh, my God. It was terrifying. Oh, my God. It was terrifying. I felt so bad for them because they had no idea. You could see they had no idea. And they don't even speak the language. They don't even speak. They're two degrees separated with language. So, like, like you could speak Yine, which is the local tribal language there. But these people don't even speak that. They speak their language. So you'd have to go from Spanish to Yine to Nawa. Oh, my God. And we were there, and these people were going. So I, how does someone know Nawa that you talk to? Because one of the Yine guys that I knew was had been living there, so he'd picked up a few Nawa words, and so oh. they, were, they were they were they were going. So so these really, people, how long have these people been there for? I didn't get that, but they were they were 
they were literally living in a camp at the like where the trees were. They stayed by the trees. They wanted to be by the trees. Oh my god! And so there's people like you could buy a Coca Cola there. Like this was like you could you know you could buy gasoline, Coca Cola, whatever. Um, way out there, there's a boat that has some like gasoline cylinders. You can fill up your boat, and then this this is where this is the launch. It's like it, it, during the gold rush in Alaska. It's like the last place before you go into the wild. Oh my god. And these, it was just, it was really horrible to see. And I think reading that the uh, Empire of the Summer Moon was made it even worse because that's so dirty. So yeah. they tricked these people into going to the town, and they just abandoned them. Yeah. Oh my God. And these people, how could they know that someone would do that to them? They, they don't even know what a town is like. Right? They don't. They don't even know what a town is. Oh like. my they're terrified. God. And so they're still, you know, you see them. They're they're washing by the river, and they're trying to feed their babies, but they're and probably starving no one gives a fuck, and no one gives a fuck, and they're oh treated like dirt too, because people, because humans are humans, and so right, um, no one wants to help them. Nobody can talk to them, and then of course they're they're kind of frustrated, right? Right. So like they're not exactly friendly either. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. Crazy. 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 Have that you seen weird. that overhead? Fit, there's there's a view like a camera is on some uh, the helicopter or something. And it's photographing these guys, and they're all fucking pointed bows yeah. and arrows. This one. How wild is that? Oh, you think that's wild? I can, I can show you something that I can't show publicly, but look at this. Really? Yeah, I got something that no one's seen. Ooh. This is from last week. I'm going to show this, everybody. No, you're not. This is from <laughs> This is from last week. Oh, wow. So what, what Joe is looking at right now is a bunch of uncontacted tribes standing in the rain. And uh, again, they don't speak the language of the people that are trying to interact with them. So this so, is across a river. Are these those same people that were in that town? The, uh, these are not the Nawa. This is a different tribe. Oh my God, man. This is wild. This is like imagining what it would be like to run into people hundreds of thousands of years ago. Are you on the single guy yet? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible, man. Like, I, I mean, that guy looks like someone from the past. Yep. It doesn't look like someone from now. Yeah. And so what they did was they sent them a canoe full of b bananas. Now, that guy's standing there in the cold, shaking his head like he might just not know the word for blanket. It's insane, man. This is incredible. Yeah. And these are essentially some of the last people on Earth like this. Yeah. And so there's a huge debate about how we protect them because... There's two camps. There's some people that say, you know, they're running scared during the Industrial Revolution. They pushed further out, and they're 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 too scared to come in and get help. And then there's right. other people that go, no, they're noble savages, and they live out there because they want to, and they're the last free people. But looking at these videos and seeing some of the stuff, they're 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 trying to carefully interact with some of the most remote tribes. And so there's people that live seven days from the nearest town that speak. A dialect of, of native language in the Amazon and the tribes will come out and they'll you know they'll come out and they'll you saw it they'll they'll come out and they'll just look they'll look at them they'll make gestures they'll do things but if you get too close to them they shoot you Ugh. so you can't really you can't just go up to them and be like hey man what's up do you want some eggs right you can't do that right so what happens is this standoff on either side of the river where you have people that live a remote lifestyle and are very very uh, uh, indigenous but that can still interact with us that know our, you know, the modern world have, have seen a dollar before, have seen a spoon, the wheel, blah, blah, Wearing an Under Armour t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. And then these people show up and they got their dicks tied to their stomachs and they wear no clothes and they're doing, they're making sounds. Sometimes they're using animal calls. They tie their dicks down so they don't get scratched up? Uh, they tie them up. They, they, so if you look at this dude, here, look, I'll just pause it on when he's. That's so gangster. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, I gotta tie it off. Otherwise, I mean, think about the stuff they're walking through. You don't want to drag it on the ground. Right, everything's got a thorn. So, like, look, look at that. Like, he's he's wow. got that thing tied up. But yeah, you Jeez. don't want to get in. You don't want to get in. Uh, I guess you don't want like mosquitoes having access to the head. You know, you know. That could be a problem. That could be a problem. Aren't there like little fishies that swim up your dick hole that's, too? That's only if you're peeing in the water. Oh, a much worse thing is when you take a shit in the jungle. Uh oh. All the bugs are coming for you, oh, so you gotta no. like you gotta like be on on like dick patrol while you're doing that because you're gonna get bug bites on your ass. But you gotta make sure they so don't go in your asshole. Well, sure, <laughs> right? Does that there's happen? that too? Yeah, because as soon oh, as you Christ. as soon as you crouch, um, 
dung beetles bigger than golf balls start flying through the air. So oh my as you're God. trying to take a shit in the so Amazon. So they know it's they, when an animal soon crouches. As you fart, there are animals following oh. you. And so you're sitting there and you have to there's a bunch of things you got to do. First, you got to break your stick, right? So you have like some leaves. The leaves is to keep your your ass bug free to get oh get the mosquitoes God. away. And then the other thing you got to do is you got to be holding a tree because you're crouching, right? Right. But then you use your ass stick to swat away the dung beetles because oh they boy. come in zzz, and I one dung beetle hit my friend Mosin in the eyeball and like scratched his actual eyeball because it oh, flew straight boy. and they have you know rhinoceros horns coming out of their faces yeah. and their exoskeletons brutal and they're heavy it's a big bug and they're airborne and they're moving quick and when they they want your shit because they're, <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to take it and they're going to roll it into balls and they're going to push it through the jungle and they're going to lay their eggs in it oh god so yeah taking a shit in the jungle is like a hole you have to know how to do it if you don't know how to do it you could end up in a lot of trouble good lord man so <laughs> many things to think about and this yeah. is your everyday existence yeah yeah i just so w when you went to that spot yeah. when you decided let's let's go there and it takes you three days, mm. and you get up there, and mm. you see these people. Did you wind up going deeper into the jungle and seeing how they actually live? So, <laughs> uh, could you can you, or is it dangerous? Well, both. Well, I had I had some trackers with me who were extremely experienced in all of this. They knew where we could and couldn't go, and we went on a. We it took us a week to get to the launch point, and then we went on a six day expedition from there, where we're eating fish out of the river, we're drinking out of the wow. river, camping on the beaches. And then we did reach a point where they found signs of uncontacted tribes. And that's when it gets dangerous. And they went, we're going back. Wow. 100% going back. I mean, and you have to. You for, for, the, for everyone's, there's no, there's absolutely no way that you can continue going. You're going to either get killed or be killed. Like, it, it turns into, I mean, these guys turned around. They loaded the shotguns and they were like, we, we turned around this moment. They turned to the boat and like, wow. the moment that you Because find, they know you're there before you know they're there. Oh, they know you're there. Yeah, 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 if you're coming in a boat too, it's probably making a lot of noise. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. Um, wait, they hear just, that thing from a long ways out. Two, 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 three weeks ago, some loggers they found them. They were the 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 chainsaw. They were the loggers were chainsawing on the Tawamanu River. The loggers were it, from the look of the. I'm kind of Sherlock Holmesing the image I saw. The, the the loggers were were cutting this log. They were dead where they were standing. So you think these guys are going mm, cutting this log. And the tribes are surrounding them. They had no idea. Wow. And they just started throwing arrows from the shadows. And so they oh found the God. bodies of two loggers. See if you can find that, out. Jamie. This was, this was within August. Uh, Peru, tribes, killed. There's a picture, like a blurry picture of it. Of the loggers? They don't show you anything. It's just you know, when it comes to the I bet media, you can find it. 